You'll often hear about converters when discussing electric motor operation. What exactly does a frequency converter do? What is it needed for? A frequency converter ensures that a conveyor belt speed can be adjusted, for example, or that a lift moves slowly and gently. To ensure this is possible, the drive motor must run at different speeds and is thus supplied with different frequencies. You will learn how a motor and frequency converter interact on the following slides. In this chapter, you will learn how mains operation differs from converter operation. You will also gain an overview of the advantages that each mode of operation offers. Advantages. Take time to compare the two operation types. In this chapter you will learn what components a converter contains, what the term parts width modulation means and how this process works. Pulse width modulation, PWM for short, is a process which generates an analog signal from a digital signal. The transistor is mentioned previously, an integral part of the power inverter, are operated at a high switching frequency. The variable pulse pause ratio is able to generate a sign shaped profile for the mean current value. This produces an also sign shaped current profile. If we look at all three phases together, a new three-phase current is produced for the motor, which does not depend on the mains frequency. In this chapter, you will learn what operating modes are available for the motor and how one quadrant operation differs from four quadrant operation. You will also receive important information on energy flow in motor-driven and dynamic operation. In general terms, an electric motor is also referred to as an electric machine. This is because all electric motors can operate as a generator. This means it can convert electric energy into mechanical energy and vice versa. This energy can be used for dynamic processes or to break the motor rapidly. Four operating modes are thus feasible for a motor. Driving in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and braking in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. In practical applications, a motor is generally run in one quadrant operation or four quadrant operation. In one quadrant operation, the motor propels in one direction only. Examples of such applications are pumps, fans, blowers, compressors, mixers, agitators, simple conveyor belts and many more. The motor is connected directly to the mains or via a converter, depending on requirements. In four quadrant operation, the motor switches directions in motor-driven mode and sometimes dynamically. Examples of such operation are most dynamic applications such as lifts, cranes, conveyor technology, packaging machines, machine tools and many more. These requirements are almost always met with converters. However, electric energy flows back into the converter during dynamic operation. The intermediate circuit capacitor can only absorb energy to a certain extent. You will learn how to overcome such circumstances on the next few slides. In motor-driven mode, the energy flows from the mains to the motor via the rectifier and power inverter when the motor is propelling. But how does the energy flow behave during braking? Since the rectifier can only guide the energy in one direction, the dynamic energy must be discharged in a different way. If dynamic operation does not occur often or the drive only needs to be braked suddenly for an emergency stop, 
Using a brake resistor is an inexpensive solution. The brake unit activates a brake resistor, which is used to convert surplus energy into heat. Put simply, the brake unit is a switch which monitors the intermediate circuit voltage. If the voltage increases to a critical level due to dynamic energy flow, the switch closes and channels the surplus energy into a brake resistor. If dynamic mode occurs frequently or permanently, a feedback into the mains network is a better solution. A mains side power inverter allows the energy to flow in both directions. This saves energy, because the energy fed back into the network is provided to other electrical loads. The mains side power inverter is the same as a motor side power inverter in terms of size and structure. However, this system has greater space requirements and entails higher costs. A multiple motor system refers to a layout where a feed-in supplies a number of power inverters via shared main side components. This has the following advantages. Energy is exchanged directly between individual drives. A shared feed-in with main side components saves space and installation costs. It provides shared use of a brake resistor or shared use of a main side power inverter. Siemens offers a modular, multiple motor system in Cinemics S120, for example. In Cinemics S120, the feed-in is referred to as line modules. The motor side power inverters are called motor modules. There are different versions of the motor modules available to match the motor outputs concerned. In this chapter, you will learn more about the terms open loop control and closed loop control and will be provided with important information on speed control and position control. You will also learn how voltage by F open loop control works and how control with an encoder differs from control without one. The converter's main task is to change the motor speed. This is normally referred to as speed control. The question that often arises here is how precisely the speed must be set. This depends on the respective application. We have to differentiate between two terms here first, open loop control and closed loop control. In the case of open loop control, the converter emits a frequency corresponding to the set point value. The asynchronous motor follows the frequency minus slippage, meaning that its speed depends on the load. In the case of closed loop control, the converter can detect the motor's actual speed using a ref counter, also known as a speed sensor. If necessary, it can adjust its output frequency to maintain the precise desired speed. This function can be used with both asynchronous and synchronous motors. Voltage by F open loop control is the easiest means of activating a motor. The term voltage by F open loop control reflects the fact that, along with an increasing voltage, a matching increasing frequency is also required to drive the current against the inductive resistance of the motor. Simply stated, the correlation begins with acceleration when V equals 0 voltage and F equals 0 Hz and increases proportionally until the point of operation is the same as the one operating on the mains. Nominal voltage and nominal frequency, for example 400 voltage and 50 Hz. The actual speed of the motor here depends on the load, whereby a slippage of approximately 1 to 5 Hz occurs. The dynamic behavior is relatively slow when set point values are changed rapidly and during load surges. Voltage by F open loop control is the most cost effective and simplest means of activation for asynchronous motors. It offers an ideal solution for simple applications such as pumps, fans, mixers and many others.
The set point speed is compared to the actual speed during speed control. The control deviation changes the output frequency until the set point and actual values match. There are two options for obtaining the actual speed, measurement and calculation. The actual speed is recorded using a speed sensor. The number of passes per unit of time represents the speed. Different encoder types are available, from simple and rugged to extremely precise. Depending on the internal control structure, we are talking about either servo control or vector control here. The encoder, associated signal line and decoding circuitry all increase costs, however. These costs can be avoided by calculating the actual speed using internal variables such as current, voltage and frequency. The term vector control without encoder is common here due to the calculation model. This is often the best solution for moderate requirements regarding control quality. Position control is required in addition to speed control if positions must be approached precisely. It is superimposed on speed control and requires an actual position measurement. The position controller determines the right set point speed based on the set point and actual positions. Such applications are usually referred to as motion control. The pulses from the same encoder, which provides the actual speed, are also used to detect the position. The position of the mechanical system can be identified via pulse counting. The requirements regarding quality and signal resolution differ here as well. Position control can be performed in the converter for individual drives. All setpoint positions are then saved and called up in the converter. The position is often controlled by higher level open loop control. This is usually the case if multiple axes need to perform coordinated movements. Typical higher level open loop control includes the Cimatic Technology CPU, Z-Motion Motion Control System and Xenomatic Machine Tool Control.